landed costing uh, 101 in D365 supply chain management. So I'll walk through on the um, what is landed costing. Let me just take my video off to save some bandwidth. I'll be uh, going through on the agenda. So what this is, uh, what the agenda is, looks like, what is landed costing, and let's uh, clear on the doubts on the terminology part. And next up is the basic uh, inbound process flows with landed costing. So we'll talk about the basic inbound uh, process flows. And uh, next up is uh, the landed costing in uh, D365 supply chain management. I'll uh, walk through on uh, some of the required uh, setups as well. And then the demos and uh, some of the resources and then Q&A. So let's go through the session and let's start. So what is landed costing? So that would be the, the first uh, question that we need to uh, clear out. So um, landed costing is basically the total cost of um, land achievement, which includes the purchase price, freight, insurance, and other costs. So if you look at um, in the um, PowerPoint, you can see there's a factory which is situated somewhere in uh, United States and shipping item would be which which the item which would be shipping will be a laptop so the item price will be a uh, thousand let's say and then it will be shipping from us to uh, new zealand and along the way there's a journey so that journey will uh, take some cost uh, per item probably the freight cost will be 10 yeah, as you know that uh, it'll be uh, going with FCL or uh, those ones are be coming up with the FCL and LCL and the containers uh, on the next slide. But this cost is per item cost, uh, the freight cost, and the per item cost for the duty would be another five dollars because when it reaches the um, the show, there will be duty, custom charges, or probably the local. Um, uh, shipping uh, local transportation charges or maybe uh, some internal charges like uh, putting on labors. So those charges will be there. And uh, then you will calculate the total uh, landed cost will be uh, uh, 1015. Uh, Kasun, quick one. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So when you say basically item price, are you talking about the X factory cost? Meaning, um, that, yeah. meaning that, you know, when you actually uh, have a subsidiary, like let us say your uh, legal entity is actually in the States, let's say, yeah. uh, you know, classic example is uh, modules that are made for cars, you know. So the module design is actually done in the US legal entity, then it's actually sent over to, let us say, Mexico, since you, you know, are showing Mexico, let's say over there. Um, so it's actually made in Mexico. And then once it's actually made, there is the plant that actually has all the, you know, the production costs, plus they add their markup and that becomes the X factory. After that, they actually like, you know, will ship it over to wherever it has to be, you know, whichever location. So you're talking about X factory plus whatever plus else, the, correct? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Carry on, carry on. Yeah. And uh, so the so this will be the true cost of an item and uh, it will be the um, it, it will be arriving at the bias location so basically and that will be the one which i'm talking about the 2015 here oh, sorry just yeah and uh, so the landed cost is, is actually essential a way to calculate your company's bottom line uh, by representing the uh, total cost of a product uh, on its journey from the factory floor to the uh, buyer's door so that when you're taking some strategic decisions um, you can based on the landed cost um, so that's why it's vital to calculate the the, uh, the landed costing let's look at some of the terminologies that we'll go through so first we'll have lcl the fcl um, so the lcl is basically if you see the image here that's the list uh, list and container load over consolidation so it's actually a, f uh, a fact to a group um, of uh, several shippers um, so several shippers 
will be putting the um, into the same container. So if you do not have enough volume to fill in the full container load, if you see the full container load here, the red mark is actually uh, representing your shipment and the um, the other uh, the blue and the gray will be representing the other importer shipment. So that <clears throat> that signifies FCL is as actually a full container of your shipment, including and the LCL is uh, not consisting of your uh, shipment, uh, basically. So you have part of that shipment from you, and then the other part will be uh, from some other um, shipment from the, some other importers. So basically, that's what it means by the LCL and FCL. And there will be another one, which is the legs. Um, so the legs is actually each journey. So imagine the journey that uh, we were talking about. So each journey. Uh, that the journey I was talking about from USA to New Zealand. So each journey can have multiple legs, each of which represent a step of the journey. And a leg can be a part of the um, uh, probably a, a duty or maybe uh, another activity or the transportation. So there will be different uh, legs on that. So that will be what it's represented by the legs. And a voyage. So the voyage is basically a, a single vessel that travels along uh, a single journey. Uh, a voyage can contain multiple uh, shipping containers and it can have um, uh, also it, it can also include inbound uh, orders from uh, different uh, legal entities as well. So when you're talking about the voyages, so you can have some um, you can have from the other legal entities as well inside your containers inside your uh, the voyage. Uh, so you have uh, some shipments from the other uh, entities as well. And um, the next up is the shipping container. So this this is the shipping container is a literal physical shipping container as uh, known from container ships, basically. And there are some other um, stuff as well, like BAF for the bank adjustment factors, which uh, which is abbreviation of uh, the uh, the term bank uh, term, the bunker, uh, which is referring to the fuel that is used to operate the ships. So there will be several, several charges like duty, uh, BAF, or yeah, um, some other charges, or the labels which can be consumed internally. So there will be several charges. So these are some of the terminologies that uh, we clear out before going into the next phase that would be helpful for us when we go into the next part of it. So let's look at the basic uh, inbound <coughs> process flow with the landed costing. So you have uh, purchase orders, um, the usual um, the standard process will be you have uh, you'll be creating purchase orders or you'll be having multiple purchase orders um, and then you can uh, create a voyage record uh, and assign those um, PO lines from multiple purchase orders or single purchase order depending on your scenario and then create the shipping containers. So after sh creating shipping containers, you can invoice uh, this um, PO. So basically what happens when you are shipping from the um, from the uh, the USA side in, in our scenario, so that ownership will be transferred back to the um, the buyers. So the buyer will be taking the ownership. At that moment, you haven't received the uh, goods, but you can invoice the PO and take that ownership to you. So that's the the, the different uh, process compared to the standard process. Because standard process, what we do is we do a uh, product receipt and then an invoice. So in this scenario, if you are using the GIT, you'll be doing the invoice and having a GIT or the goods in transit, uh, or you'll be doing a receiving. And then finally, you'll do a actual invoice. So that's that's what will happen in the purchase order scenario. So let's look at a trans order scenario. We'll create a transfer order of um, uh, orders, and then similarly we can create a voyage record. And then what you can do is you can add TO lines and create the shipping uh, containers. And the next one is the uh, transfer order uh, shipment and receiving part. And then you'll have an actual invoice in that sense. So this is. The usual uh, the purchase order and transfer order in the inbound with the landed costing uh, process flows. And let's look at how we can enable that um, feature. 
So how to enable the landed cost feature? So if you go to the uh, feature management, you will see landed cost and it's under transportation management and uh, you can enable that feature. Once you enable that feature, it will um, have a separate uh, module. You, it will be uh, seen in your in the FinOps. And next up is the landed cost parameters. <clears throat> so the key parameters will be show landed cost feature. So this you need to activate. Uh, once you activate, you can see the, the landed cost features activating in several forms inside like purchase orders, transfer orders. So you'll see these uh, coming up once you activate this on this show landed cost feature. And under the landed cost parameters, there are several parameters that you can use. So here you have uh, allow zero cost example. The allow zero cost will, if you enable it, it will allow you to post the invoice PO, um, PO invoice uh, with the zero cost in your charges. If you haven't enabled it, you will not be able to post the PO invoice without um, without a value. So without estimated value, basically. So that's um, one of the examples I can uh, talk about this uh, landed cost parameters, but there are a lot of uh, parameters in this. Um, we will go through to the next um, status. So the next one is Hello. 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 Do you have a question? Hello. So next up will be the voyage status. So we have a uh, voyage statuses, different statuses you can create. So these will be um, tracked under the voyage statuses and you can define the main status and the parent status. Uh, so if, if you look at 10, that is the creator status and the next status is the GIT. So the GIT is the parent of the GIT will be the, uh, the previous, uh, the 10 dash created state. So these are the uh, these are the wage uh, wage statuses which can uh, which establish the state of uh, status values that user can assign to wages. Um, users can assign these uh, wage status values to all levels of wage uh, uh, shipping containers uh, for you as well. So there are a few few places you can um, assign these uh, wage statuses. So next up is the cost type codes. The cost type codes is where you will define all these costs that I was talking about, freight, duty, fuel, uh, demarrage, or maybe BEF, uh, um, which we were discussing earlier. So the AR, so the, the air freight, you might have air freight as well sometimes. So these kind of different cost type codes you have, and then you can uh, define the debit side and the credit side. So if you're paying against the vendor, uh, pay for against the vendor, then you can put it as a vendor if um, so. That's what the credit uh, side is the vendor here. And if you do, if you do have it as credit, what happens is um, when you go to the accounts payable, um, this uh, cost will be showing to you and uh, you can pay to that uh, specific vendor. So if it's not the type of vendor, you would notice that it wouldn't uh, drop down in the accounts payable uh, side of it. So we'll go into that uh, later on. So that will be the that will be something which you need to uh, keep it in the mind. And if you're using standard cost, there are some um, some more setups as well in world. So which you can do these standard cost setups as well as moving average uh, as well if you're having moving average. Um, next up with the auto cost. So the auto cost will be um, defined under different areas. So you can define under wage or you can de define under shipping containers. So imagine if you have different shipping containers have different charges. So that can go under uh, the shipping containers so that you will assign the cost um, against that, against the shipping container, uh, not against the wage. Um, so based on how we want to um, allocate those costs based on the areas you can define your auto cost here and the other thing you need to uh, keep in your mind is the apportionment method so there will be different apportionment methods that you can use you can use percentage quantity uh, weight so there are different um, apportionment method you can use 
And the next up is the uh, shipping port. So there are uh, several um, shipping ports that you might have. So you can define all these shipping ports under this uh, setup. And uh, OK, and one more thing to highlight all this setup, which I'm highlighting is it's like bare minimum setup. So there are some other setups which I'm not going through uh, in detail, but some of them will be for informational purposes. But uh, most of the setup which I go through is like bare minimum, which you need to um, have uh, to set up uh, a landed costing module. And uh, the next up is the tracking control center. So the tracking control center where you will have that uh, capability of um, uh, tracking your example, like you can define your lead times against um, different legs. Um, so this, this is where you can define your front port and two port and legs and then uh, and your uh, uh, what you call the um, lead time. <clears throat> so we'll get into the details when we um, go into the system later on. And you have journey templates. So the journey templates would define the, all those uh, legs that we were talking about, loading, journey, customer, customs, or the local. So there are several legs it can involve in one journey template. And uh, these are specified here. And you can give um, the, the lead time, which we were uh, talking about earlier. Uh, those leads time will apply uh, when you're tracking these goods. Uh, so this is where the, the this is where the journey template is key in that sense. And the next up is uh, the legs. So the legs are the the ones which uh, we have uh, defined on the previous step. Uh, if you notice that the the journey in for the journey you can use these ones and it has a mode of delivery as well from port and to port will be actually derived from the port setup that which you did and then you can attach a mode of delivery against that uh, for the legs um next up is the warehouse setup changes so um one more thing to highlight you can use advanced warehousing um as well or the basic warehouses as well in the the git process so based on that you can um, enable your inventory and warehouse management uh, parameter as well if you're having the advanced but the the difference will be here when you enable you will notice that goods in transit warehouse and the under delivery warehouse will be enabled so these are the two warehouses which you need to set up and if you have the git <clears throat> if you enable this uh, ladder costing with GIT, then you can specify these uh, transit warehouse and under delivery warehouse. So the, the GIT is where you would um, store the goods um, during your the shipment. So when, during, when you transfer your ownership, your goods will be sitting in the GIT warehouse. And the under delivery warehouse will be where if you have a uh, let's say you're delivering 100 quantity and you might receive only 95 so that the the under delivery part of five quantity which will be actually sitting in the under delivery warehouse and um, then you can take the actions um, on top of that we can yeah, discuss further but these are the important uh, importance of the goods in transit and the under delivery and uh, you'll have different types inside the warehouse uh, if you notice goods in transit and uh, type under for that and one more setup which will be critical is the posting so if you notice inside the inventory management setup posting there will be two accounts landed cost goods in transit and landed cost charge accrual so the landed cost goods in transit you will need to set up if you're using the transit process the GRT process and landed cost charge accrual. Um, it's a separate um, separate feature. So if you need, you can set it up. Um, next up is the work. So inside the uh, the work classes, what you need to specify the GIT uh, work class ID. So that will be the one which will be used for the uh, the work. So th there will be separate work class ID that you need to create under the work classes. There will be two uh, different mobile device menu items. Um, um, yeah, three basically, but I think um, the GIT receive and GIT put away you can uh, utilize. So the, there, are, there are three out of the box you can see GIT receive and GIT put away. 
Um, then uh, warehouse management um, set up work. So there will be a work code type called goods in transit. And if you notice that the work class ID GIT will be used here. So that's um, that's what we have um, set up in the earlier step that I was going through the work class ID. And uh, next up is the location directives. And under the location directives, you can set up this goods in transit as well. Let's get into the system and go through more on that. Let me refresh. Let's get a purchase order. Okay, let's before going through the setup, I think we'll go through some of the processes and then I'll highlight um, later on on the, the setup part. So let's create a PO. And um, while it creates, um, there are two ways that you can create the purchase orders. You can create the purchase orders from the um, purchase order itself, going to the new voyage, or you can go to the old voyager screen and then create it as well. And uh, in this case, let me use uh, stand uh, the basic warehouse in this scenario. So I've created the purchase order header. And let's attach one line here. One is my item. Let's say 10 quantity 12. And let's save this and confirm it. So uh, once it confirmed, I'll show you the um, going to the header. Uh, one of the, the important setup that we were talking about is, is the FOB uh, delivery term. So you would notice that goods in transit management has been enabled for this one, uh, for this um, terms of delivery. So that's key to enable. If you're using the GIT, that will be uh, needed to be enabled. And let's go to the lines. And we can create the new voyage from here. OK, so let's create the new voyage. You can give a description here, but in this my scenario, I would probably give a PO number uh, just for my reference purposes. If I have a booking reference, you can use. If you have a vessel, if you need to give a vessel number, so you have to give a vessel number so if you have that if you have your own vessel you can set up your own vessel so i haven't specified that but very um, i mean very few clients would have that uh, own vessel so in that sense you don't need to specify you don't need to set up this vessel and you can just specify um, you can enter any character here so basically the vessel reference will be here and next up, you can select the journey template. Let's select the one which I've set up. So it says CNN GP QSL GP. So that's the setup which I've um, uh, selected here. Later on, we'll go through <clears throat> on the setup part, but uh, first we'll go through this scenario. Let's see. Motor delivery shipping company, if you have, you can specify. So this will be applied um, if you have specific uh, cost for shipping company or specific cost targets. Motor deliveries, you can apply those. And if you have a way bill, you can put in there as well. Let's click OK. So it will create the, <clears throat> the wage. Uh, it will go into the wage editor screen. And here you can specify the number of uh, quantities you want to um, you want to add in, but in my scenario, I'll probably add everything. And uh, let's put in add to staging list. Uh, one more thing, I think, before going in the screen. So you have uh, setups here as well. Like uh, there are a few setups you can enable. Like if you're using purchase orders, transfer orders, then you can enable um, uh, and disable based on your selections criteria. Right and you can restrict to a site. And if you want to add in your display dimensions, because sometimes you might be using configurations like sizes and all the other stuff. So you can enable these dimensions. And uh, 
uh, there are more as well, like warehouse. So uh, if you notice that we came from 155 purchase order, so that's why it's been filtered for 155. But if I remove this, it'll it'll have all the list. So whenever you come from the purchase order side, this will be filtered. So that's what you need to know. And the days forward, days back. So this is similar to the item arrival screen uh, view and the, the way of the behavior. And there are uh, several other fields as well, uh, and the company as well, which is one more important one which you can filter. So that's about the voyage editor. Let's go into the view staging list. So inside the uh, the view staging list, uh, what we can do is we can create um, shipping containers. So let's say this 10 quantity probably it's um, it's a large item. So maybe I need two shipping containers. So let's let's and let's demonstrate like that so i'll create my first shipping container container one and if you have a shipping date you can do a shipping date and previously um as i mentioned as well this if you have your own shipping containers you can specify in the setup and you can select from that but if you don't then you can just keep the uh, shipping container for reference hey kazun uh, quick one yeah. again huh? Yeah, uh, fantastic sure. stuff, man. Um, yes, so when you are assessing the shipping containers, I mean, do you also consider the pallet sizes? Um, you know, how many units actually go on a pallet, and what's the how many pallets you would need, and all that? Mm, <clears throat> not necessarily. Mm, we are estimating that, but um, <clears throat> there are some other other mm, measurements like. Um, if you're using measurement uh, type, you can base your cost based on those. Like if you're using skids and stuff like that, you can use those and you can use the weight, but you're not necessarily uh, looking at the, the sizes on the planning part of it. Yeah. OK. OK, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, all right. So that's the uh, the shipping container. So I've uh, created. Um, yeah, shipping container I created. I think I've attached everything, but it's fine. Let's let's go like this. It's fine. Um, but otherwise, if you have, if you, if I edited the quantity, um, I could have have uh, two containers. But yeah, I've uh, created as one. So let's move like this. It's fine. Let's look at the tracking. So that's where the tracking comes in. We were uh, talking about earlier. So this is the tracking. So there are the legs actually, and if you edit the um, the leg. Um, and put in your start date and save this. It will actually calculate based on your defined lead times. So you get that estimated end date. So that end date is basically, we can set it up. This is actually a setup. So basically this is set up inside the, um, into the PO uh, and this will update that delivery date here. So if you go to the line here and delivery, so you would notice that confirmed delivery date has been updated. Let's come back and uh, let's change that date again. Go to tracking. Edit. And let me say maybe it's coming on 30th and save it. And if you notice, it will calculate uh, your ending date here. So the thing which you need to um, so uh notice here as well so if you have multiple shipping containers you will have multiple shipping containers and you can filter as well and you can add the field as well here so the multiple um the shipping containers have uh, separate um uh, tracking so that you can track so sometimes if you have in scenario some of the containers might get delay or uh, dif uh, different uh, time period so it'll, it can be tracked separately yeah, so we changed the date 915. So let's look at the, the PO. Let's go to the PO and check again the delivery date and see what happened. Yeah, so it's been updated as 915. So that's what we were talking about. So basically that tracking um, that tracking actually helps to update that uh, date. Um, this is a setup, so you can set it up as like that. And let's look at the cost as well. So let's look at what are the costs involved. So we have a estimated cost of 300 for BAF and DOT we have nine. So yeah, we could have, have freight uh, charges as well, but yeah, haven't um, 
given the freight charges in here, but we could always add it as well um, on here. So if you want to add it, in, you can define here the freight. And let's see. Save it. Let's come back. Let's go to the casting query. Yeah. So I think it's based on the percentage. So it gives the 120 um, the um, the freight charges. So so we have three charges basically. So we can go ahead with it so what happens um so we have the we have the voyage we created the voyage and uh, we've uh, looked at the tracking we looked at the cost inquiries and then the next step is actually for us to um let's say we are taking the ownership so it's been shipping from the usa side and once it's been shipped um, over there then we need to take the ownership and we need to build I mean, we need to invoice it. So let's say uh, we have all the details and uh, we, we have all the information that it's um, transferring back the ownership to us. And let's proceed with the posting invoice part. Let's put in the uh, invoice number, uh, invoice date, and I can perform the matching status here. Update uh, one more thing in, for, to note. This has to be ordered quantity, and uh, we could be, because simply because you haven't received it, and you are doing the invoice without receiving it, so this uh, has to be ordered quantity. And the other thing to notice here is the update match status. So you can't do three-way matching. So you can only do up uh, to two-way matching. So that's uh, one thing that you need to not um, uh, remember because if you are using GIT, you would not have the receiving. You would not have done the receiving. So that's why. Uh, that needs to be uh, keep in your mind and let's update the status and the match status is passed and you can post it. So once this posted, hopefully a PO confirmed. Yeah, if your PO is not confirmed, it will give you a validation. So um, so you have to post a PO. I think in my case, I posted the PO confirmation. So that's why there's no error. So it's good. Um, so posted the invoice and let's look at the transactions. So you can see now it's been reserved against that 11 GIT, the uh, goods in transit warehouse. So that's where it, uh, it is. And uh, so now the invoice has been done, but goods haven't been received yet. So the next up is the uh, the goods receiving part. So you can use goods in transit, receive goods in transit, or you can create a arrival journal. In this case, probably I'll create a arrival journal here. So you can create from goods in transit and initialize the quantity. And that will bring in the quantity here. And then you can go ahead and post this. So you're posting the arrival journal, so it's been posted. Let's come back to the transactions and see what happened now. Okay. So this is the transaction. So you can see that um, all these, uh, the goods in transit and the other transactions got updated, the physical date and the, uh, the financial date and receiving has been done. The, the stock is actually in the, the warehouse and you can see the cost amount as well on the purchase order side, uh, which is also taking that, um, uh, the cost which we um, put it in the, um, put it earlier inside the uh, the cost um, inquiry section we had few costs so those costs from the landed costing has actually came in here so that's what you can see the the cost amount here let's go back um so we've completed most of the part i think the one which we can also complete here is the tracking so if you want to track um uh, if you want to get the actual end dates and stuff you can update here so that it gets the actual end date in your screen so that can be done 
next up is the um, so if you have any other information like documents received, you can update the status to the the documents received. So there there will be um, um the, the not the status actually the document received is uh, checkbox. And if you want to put it as in transit, you can put it as voyage status um, in transit. So these these ones, you, I mean, the, this is the status changes. So until you cost it, you can't come uh, close this one. So that is the the latest and the, the final stage. So you can't cost it because you haven't actually paid uh, the bills yet. Let's try and sh um, show you that. Yeah, so you have an invoice cost still exists, so that's because of that you can't do that. Uh, if you go to the cost inquiry before we post that invoice, um, just to show you these are only estimated costs that we have here. So I will be going ahead with the actual cost. So how we realize the actual cost. Let's go to the uh, accounts payable. Um, and the invoice journal. Create the AP invoice, go to the lines. So what we're trying to do is we are actually going to pay that um, vendor for freight, uh, let's say freight charges. I think I put in 120. So let's uh, select any other vendor uh, just to demonstrate. So I'm just selecting the other another vendor. So just imagine this is my vendor which I need to pay for the freight charges. Basically, let's say invest it. Okay. And let's go to the functions. Select voyage. You can select the Yeah, I think the last one, 155, that's the one. So I select this uh, 0, 0, 0, 009. So the the thing to notify here that there are cost areas specified. So you remember that the sh um, you have the auto cost defined um, based on different uh, costing areas. So if you define some of the cost on the shipping container, so you can filter the shipping container one, but the voyage will include everything. So this is the highest level. So if you go under voyage, it will show all the, the cost. But if you want to see from the shipping container level, you can see from the shipping container level, but my case all from the voyage. So just select the voyage. And let's select this one. Click OK. Yeah, so all these uh, costs came in, but I'm only interested in paying my. So I mean, let me see how many. Uh, I think I put in 310. So let me just change that because I want to only pay for the uh, freight. Let me just go back to functions, select voyages. And if um, the all the costs are coming from the same vendor, then probably you can yeah, um, build the same uh, vendor. But um, the scenario I'm just demonstrating is basically uh, this freight cost is coming from one vendor. So I've just uh, put in the allocated that cost. Click OK. And that came in uh, with the ledger. So um, let's go ahead with posting that. So once you post it, what happens is that uh, it will realize that actual cost. And if you go to that cost inquiry, that will be updated. Um, let's go back to our wage and see what happened now. Yeah, let's go to the voyage general. Cost inquiry. Yeah, so the actual cost came in, so that's done. Let's let's try to demonstrate a homo scenario with the advanced warehousing. So let me create another PO and just the difference would be the receiving part. 
Um, so you have to, uh, two different uh, menu items which you can receive those. Let's, uh, you can receive and GIT receive and put away basically. So let's create the um, purchase order. So instead of uh, Devon, I'm going to select the 24, which is the advanced warehouse. So this same create the purchase order header, and then I'll specify the item. That's it. Save. Uh, we confirm in the PO. So that's important because if you post the PO invoice, it will not allow you if you haven't confirmed the PO. So post PO confirmation, and then we create the new voyage here. Oh, before creating the voyage, I probably show there are some more fields on the, the landed costing area here. So if you see the PO, you would have there are several fields here from the landed cost area. Yeah, let's go back to create new voyage. One, five, six. Difference vessel detail, one of delivery, I need the journey template. So let me give the same journey template and click OK. Yeah, so I'll get the um, coming to the voyage editor screen. So if I select and add to staging list, and I give the staging list. This time, let's change the quantity. Let's create two containers this time. Yep, yeah, so one is uh, created. So let's create uh, another shipping container. Let me do it again. Let me cancel. Yep, so I have uh, two shipping containers, CN1 and CN2. Let's go to the voyage. Yeah, so you can see that uh, two different um, shipping containers here attached in one voyage. Um, let's go to the uh, tracking. So you can so you can actually add the tracking, say the container. Shipping container. So, yeah, basically you can move these fields, but um, just for the time, for the interest of time, just to show you the CN1 and CN2, you can filter both. Yeah, like that. If you remove the filtration, you can see all. And there are some other functionalities here. You can um, you can use those one as well. But um, more importantly, let's come back and because um, that will be the same, nothing much different. And if you go to the cost inquiry, I think one more thing which I haven't shown you is the the view as well. So inside the view, you can have different uh, views here. Um, so you can enable the references, voyage, shipping containers. So so based on that, uh, the cost will be showing here, right? And uh, let's come back and. Uh, from the previous example, I think you would notice that there's a there's a difference here um, because it goes by the shipping container. So the cost you can see. 
Um, let's come back here. So we are just interested only in the receiving part uh, to show. So let's do the posting the invoice. And I'll show you how to receive from the, the warehouse side of it. Uh, while it come, I'll just uh, refresh my simulator so that it will be ready when I when we get there. So you can specify the invoice number, you can specify the invoice state and same update match status. And then post. Right. So posting has been done. So if we go to the inventory transactions. Yeah, so similar like the last time, you can see all these transactions and reserved against the GIT warehouse. And let's um, come back to the um, just to show the receiving in receiving good in transit so it's been it's been there so you can receive um so since it's uh the advanced warehouse i'm going to use the advanced warehouse receiving um let's go back to the user id put in the user id and your password and go to the inbound section okay one more thing we'll do before we go there we just load the whole work screen as well at the same time so that it will, it will be loading while we do this. So GIT receive <clears throat> to the, uh, specify the wage and I need to specify the shipping container C N one. Right, I will be a three for all. How much the quantity? Uh, five. Okay. Yeah, work completed. Um, so then let's receive the uh, the other one as well. And, um, This is only an emulator, so if you, um, you you'll be doing it uh, basically in the warehouse app, but uh, because of the environment um, using, I have to show you using the this method, but um, generally it will be uh, using that uh, warehouse app. And let's say five. Click OK. Yeah, so that's done as well. Work completed. I'll just go to the all work section and show you that. So there's two two works generated in the kind of the goods in transit. So let's complete only one uh, for the interest of time, and and then we can show. Uh, we can see some more information put away. So I'm going to receive it, um, just confirm in the location. Yeah, so done. So if you come back, this will be completed and it will go away here. Correct. So if I show you the closed work, that will be there. And uh, that's the last one, I think, 156. Yeah, just now, which I did. Yeah, so this is the one. Yeah, so that's about uh, receiving using the advanced warehouses. So that's a bit of a difference. So uh, the other things will rest will remain the same. And um, one more thing probably I'll highlight is um, what happens if you receive, you notice that if you go to the landed cost, there will be some inquiry screens here over or under transactions. So under this one, um, what you can do is you can basically um, Let's see, let's see an example. So in, in this example, if you notice that we have 10 original quantity, but you receive only eight, there will be a difference of two. So you can decide what you what you will do with that. 
so you can create a moving channel or a purchase order. So that's that's what you can do. And in this sense, I think in my example, I've used the uh, the moving channel to post in terms of um, in terms of the uh, it, it's basically using the moving channel in, in this. But otherwise, you can use a uh, purchase order, and then you can create a return order. So that's uh, one thing and then the other one is actually you could have uh, over receiving so the over receiving would also have the similar scenario which will be showing under the screen um, and then you can decide uh, what you're going to do with those um, whether you're going to have it add into your stock or whether you're going to create a new purchase order uh, and then uh, pay the uh, pay the vendor back so this is um, this is another um, option which you can I um, mean this is another one which is from the system itself um, over or under transactions and if you want to do that you can specify under over under tolerances so they, they I mean if you want to have uh, tolerances that you can specify here but otherwise the standard would still have this um, go through but if you have tolerances and you have different uh, item uh, group tolerances or vendor group tolerances you can specify here um i think probably i haven't touched upon the journey templates and stuff like that so we can look at those setups uh, which we're talking about earlier so this is where the this is where um i think this is the one which we've used so this is where the uh, the legs are designed in the journey template defined in the journey template so the journey template will define all the legs and the legs are set up um separately under the legs here and uh, let's go to the tracking control center just to show you on the um, the lead times. So if you notice that lead time is actually calculated from here, the lead time, and make sure that you have a sale or you have activity attached to it. Otherwise, you wouldn't see there in the inbound tracking. So this is where the the lead time and uh, with lead time specified. So that's where you will be using inside the if you go back to the voyage or voyages this is um, sorry wrong click tracking so this is this is what it's based upon the journey templates um no other status is, yeah i think the auto cost would be a good one so the auto cost will be another one which um, will be interested on. Um, so the BAF is actually percentage uh, and I've used the fixed in this method, but um, there are different portion method. I, as I mentioned, quantity, amount, volume, weight. So there are different, <clears throat> different apportionment uh, methods you can use. And uh, you can specify some uh, cost under the shipping container. So if you see the insurance is under the shipping container level, and then some of them, pro, some of the costs will be under the the item uh, level as well. Okay, so the other one which we can see is the cost type code, which is another one. Um, will be um, interested when you're setting it up. So this case, it's been, uh, uh, consuming internally the lab labels so that's why the ledger account type debit item and uh, you would see yeah so you see the um, the ones which we tried is afraid basically have the item and the other vendors so that can be paid against the vendor for the freight yeah so i uh, think local transaction also uh, bearing internally yeah so BAF is actually the uh, another one which we paid uh, for the vendor so that's um that's what you can do basically um there are there are several features and several reports as well and i think i don't have time to go through all the reports but i can quickly show some of the reports like out outstanding invoices and i think in this environment the trial i don't think it I can show some of the reports here and um, in the reports here and 
you have outstanding report, uh, outstanding invoices, you could have um, wage costing by individual cost. So that what it does is basically if you have an item, um, let's say you have 100 items with um, with the, the freight charge will be, let's say, 100. So, so it will show you the um, per item cost. So it will show you freight uh, $1. So basically it will show you all the, the item and the other charges uh, per item cost here. And this will have all the outstanding invoices here. Say over, you have over or under transactions, cost estimates, uh, will show the cost estimates which are pending here. Mm, yeah, the wage line. So yeah, some of them from, yeah, this is one. And there are some periodic tasks which you can um, use to update the statuses and stuff like that. And, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm good. Um, let's see if you have uh, any question. I'll go back to my slides. Let's see. And so some of the resources for you to have and yeah, you can have the Q&A if we can um, do the Q&A now and our next session will be uh, on 17, just an information before. Uh...